Okay, so here we are on the outside of the aircraft. We're now going to do the walk around inspection, part of the pre-flight of the LX-7-20. So the first thing on our list is to open the baggie store. So we'll open that up. Inside the baggie store, we wanna make sure that our baggage is secure and uh, any loose items are are secured down and make sure that there's uh, nothing beyond the weight limits and make sure all that our baggage is loaded correctly. Also inside here, we have our emergency oxygen system. So we wanna check the pressure and validate that the valve is on for the, valve, for the oxygen system. Once that's completed, we can go ahead and close the baggage door. And then up above, we have the antennas on the top of the aircraft for traffic and navigation. We wanna make sure that those are secure and present. We make sure this window looks good and then we'll work our way down. We have the static port on the way down. You can look at that, make sure it's clear. And then we have our step uh, here, our assist step to get in and out of the cabin. We wanna make sure that that is secure. And the gear, main gear doors for the LX-7 are spring-loaded closed. Uh, so we just simply open the door and look up inside. We have the uh, hydraulic system is in here. Uh, so the reservoir needs level should be validated that it is serviced properly. And then we want to make sure that there's nothing loose um, or going to interfere with the landing gear as it does retract into this area. And the door should close securely by itself. And now we'll continue down the left-hand side of the fuselage. And we have our one and only inspection panel on the exterior of the aircraft. So we'll make sure that the six screws are secure. And then on the horizontal stabilizer, uh, we continue to look at the leading edge. The DI system is built into the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. And so we uh, wanna make sure that there's no impact damage or nothing that will interfere with the performance of that DI system. That brings us to the elevator and we will move the elevator through its full range of travel, verify that there's nothing interfering with that, make sure our static wicks are secure, and then we just continue to move over to the trim tab. This is the pitch trim tab. It has several connections to verify that they are secure and tight, and we don't have excessive play in the tab itself. And then the rudder uh, stops are built into the lower rudder hinge, so we can verify that that hits the hinge uh, at one extreme and then we move it over to the other extreme and verify that it is there. That looks good. And then we have the uh, right hand elevator. We can verify that it is also working properly and not binding up and its static wicks are securely attached as we come around the right hand side and look at the right hand uh, horizontal stabilizer leading edge. But it's also looking really good. Verify that it's not damaged in any way. And then as we make our way down the right hand side of the fuselage itself, we have the BRS uh, hatch here. We want to make sure that its seal is intact and there's good integrity, no cracks or nothing unusual about that. We can get a, another look at the antennas on the top of the aircraft and then the right hand side static port. We do have two static ports to provide equilibrium in the static system, equal pressure. And the right-hand gear door opens up. Again, several electrical connections uh, are in here. And if we did have ground power, it would plug in right here and uh, just verify that there's nothing going to interfere with the landing gear as it retracts into that opening. And then the right-hand flap, the final drive is here. We wanna make sure it's not going to interfere with anything as it retracts uh, forward. And then our flap system is a unique flap system. It has um, a vein and a main flap. And sometimes we call this the baby flap, but that is uh, part of the secret of how we get the airplane to fly so slowly. Um, so always make sure that that vein is intact and the main flap is attached to its hinges, its hinges as well. And then the uh, aileron system here, we can see the entire drive system of the aileron when the flap is down. That's one of the nice things about this design. It opens up the entire trailing edge of the flap to visible inspection when the flap system is deployed. So we can check all of the connections of the aileron system here. 
verify that all the hinge hardware is intact and the static discharges are present. And then we get to the wingtip. We have all of our LED lights. We have halo lights, our LED landing lights, and our position and strobe lights, as well as a logo light, which shines on the ground. Um, and then we have the OAT probe. So we want to make sure all of that stuff is present. And the fuel vent is right here. Let's make sure that is clear. Working our way down, we see our 90 gallons per side fuel capacity. And we just make sure that the fuel cap itself is intact and tight and latched down. Um, leading edge of the wing has the DI system built into it as well. So same thing as we looked at for the horizontal, we just want to make sure there's no impact damage there. And then as we sit a little bit lower here, we can look back at the hinges on the flap system and make sure that the hinge hardware is all present and accounted for. The main wheel, the main wheel uh, has a safety cotter pin in the axle. We'll make sure that that is present. The tire is inflated and the brakes are good and there's no fluid dripping out anywhere. Uh, and then as we make our way down to the wing root and forward of the nose, we've got the exit area for the cowling air to pass through the oil cooler and exit overboard. We want to make sure that that is clear and not restricted in any way. Um, cowling hardware is present and again, nothing dripping out of the breather system. The cowling latches here are latched. Hardware is all present. The exhaust system is installed such that we can see the both sides of the hardware. We can see the nut portion of the hardware to validate that uh, it's not loose or falling off of there. And as we get to the spinner, we have four uh, our four blades on our propeller and in between those blades we want to make sure that the spinner hardware is secure and tight. And then we'll look into the uh, inlet. So this lip is heated on the inlet and then we want to make sure that so we make sure that that's intact and then make sure nothing is inside the inlet plenum itself. And as we make our way around the corner here left hand side of the fuselage make sure that the uh, latches are latched and again our exhaust hardware is present and uh, all these parts are secure and then the oil door here is how we would check the oil and i'm touching the oil filler now um, it'd be difficult to see in this video but the uh, filler is right there inside the oil door and then down below here we have uh, the cowling exit area for the uh, bleed air cabin intercooler which takes thermal energy out of that bleed air prior to us putting it into the cabin to pressurize the cabin so that area must be clear and we can work our way over to the left hand main gear same thing brakes are good and present and um, no fluid dripping out and then our cotter pin is locking the axle hardware and we'll just make our way down the leading edge looking at the DI system again making sure there's no damage to that again 90 gallons in this side make sure the fuel cap is secure and our lights are all here we've checked our pitot heat from when we powered it up and make sure the pitot tube is clear and our fuel vent is clear here as well and then our left hand aileron so travel is good static wicks are good and our trim tab is secure and again we can see the entire drive system right here with the flap deployed so we give that a look down sure everything looks good there and then we have one more final inspection point here uh, as we see that the uh, final drive rod is secure for the left flap. And with that, that concludes the inspection for the pre-flight walk around of the LX7-20.